Hey everyone, this is a quick rundown of the Midjourney updates from November, and we have a lot to cover. The biggest news this month was the release of the Style Creator. This is a new tool that lets you create custom SREF codes by selecting images with visual characteristics you like. To use it, click Style Creator under the Aesthetic section. You'll start by typing a prompt. For your first one, I recommend keeping it simple, something like a character or an animal. After you submit your prompt, you'll see a grid of images. These images were not created using your prompt. They are pre-cached images that each represent a different SREF code. We'd all be using up a lot of fast GPU time if Midjourney had to create all of these on the fly for every user. But don't worry, your actual prompt is still important. Here you'll select images from the grid based on characteristics you like. Maybe you want to create a style that is illustrative, photorealistic, or has bold colors. Pick the images that have those qualities, then click Refine Style. If you don't like any of the styles in the grid, click Skip to load a new set. So you want to go through multiple rounds of selecting images from the style grids. Each time you click Refine Style, Midjourney creates a brand new custom SREF code based on your selections and runs your original prompt with that new style. It's not blending the styles that you're picking, it's trying to figure out what you like about your selections and then creates new styles from that. The more rounds that you complete, the more Midjourney learns about the characteristics you're looking for. You can see the styles that result from each round of refinement over here. Your results also show up on the Create page where you'll see the new style codes which you can use in your future prompts. I recommend keeping the Create page open in a separate tab while you're working with the style creator. And you might notice that these style numbers are much larger than the 4.2 billion SREF codes we already have. So the style creator codes do not exist until you create them. The numbers become active as you make your selections. This interface took me a few tries to get used to, but the more I use the style creator, the more powerful I think it is. I have an 18 minute demo video over on my Patreon where I walk through several examples and explain in more detail how this grid works and the prompts used here. Midjourney is planning to improve the style creator within the next couple of weeks. They might switch to a scrolling grid here instead of the paginated rounds. They also want to give us the option to start from a specific SREF code, use an image as a starting point, or have the tool pick up on context from our prompts. Like if you include the word photo in your prompt, it would start off with showing you photographic styles. Because updates are coming so soon, I'm probably going to hold off on doing a full YouTube tutorial right now. I'm a little worried that if I spend a bunch of time creating a long tutorial, it's just going to be outdated a week later. And my priority is to give you guys high quality, long lasting tutorials as best I can. So for now, I recommend checking out the style creator demo that I posted last week on my Patreon. I'm actually running a 20% discount on new memberships right now. So for the price of a cheap coffee, you get access to the demo, all of my monthly prompt guides and a bunch of other resources. Yes, I'm slipping in a community promotion here, but honestly, the value that you get for less than $5 is huge and it's the best way to support this channel. Next, user profiles launched a couple of weeks ago. You can now create your own profile page with a custom username, profile image, banner, bio, and links to your social media. Your profile and banner images can be images or videos, but they must be creations you made with Midjourney. Your profile has a few main sections. The spotlight shows your favorite images and videos that you want to highlight. Click the little pin icon on any image or video for it to show up here. The archive shows all of your public images and videos. I know a lot of people are confused about what shows up in the archive and how public versus private works. I have a separate video that explains all of that in detail that I'll link below. So if you're confused about profiles, go watch that video. We can also follow other users and visit random profiles to see what people are creating. User profiles are part of the community features that Midjourney continues to build out. We already have the chat section, for example, with different rooms where you can prompt alongside others. There are also several Midjourney community events that you can attend. I'll link the events calendar down below. They do have more planned for user profiles specifically, including an explore-like feed that shows images and videos from people we follow. A V7.1 release is looking less and less likely at this point. The team has been testing a version with the guides and mods that has slightly better prompt accuracy and image coherence. We know that an updated Omni reference is off the table until V8, but they really want to get real-time previews working before they would consider releasing 7.1. That's where you'd see previews as you type your prompt. 
And unless they can get this to work in the very near future, it looks like they're probably putting 7.1 on hold in favor of pushing forward with V8, which honestly I think is the right thing to do. V8 is the top priority right now. The team has been testing some smaller models and things are looking very promising. They're about to start their big training runs and will have major testing after that. Unfortunately, this means that V8 will not arrive by the end of the year and we're likely looking at a January release. There's been a lot going on in the background that contributes to the longer timeline. Midjourney has been onboarding tons of new servers and rewriting their entire code base while simultaneously developing new models and features. It's also the holiday season now, so things move a little slower. V8 is being trained on a significantly larger data set, which means it will have much broader and deeper knowledge. Everything is expected to improve, including image quality, coherence, prompt understanding, aesthetics, omni-reference with multiple omni-reference capability, better text rendering, and more. They plan to release the general model first and follow it with an updated edit model. The edit model will include better in-painting and multiple reference capabilities, so you can do something like combine a scene with characters and objects more seamlessly. If you want to try to do that now though, you can go watch this video. They also want to enable instruction-like editing where you can type out the edits that you want to make and Midjourney will do them. I'm really excited about the future editor updates. They're also planning to release an updated retexture feature, which would be wonderful, along with new upscalers. Basically, V8 will be released and then we'll see a cascade of several other feature updates, some of which feel long overdue. Next, let's talk about some of the other models in development. The V2 video model is expected to come after the V8 image model release. The results will have better quality and prompt adherence, more controllable camera movement and audio, though they haven't quite decided what that will look like yet, but it is on the agenda. 3D development should resume after V8 is released. The initial goal is to let you move the camera around and reframe your images from different angles. And some of you have been asking if we're getting a new Niji model. The team has confirmed that they are playing around with a possible Niji 7 release. For those not familiar, Niji is Midjourney's anime trained model. The most recent version is Niji 6. Niji 7 is currently a bit of a side project though and not a primary focus, but it went from being off the table to now back on. Next, we have some web and mobile changes. The hide button is now called trash. It still functions the same as it did before. Someday they might enable a timed auto delete for items in the trash, but they don't have anything like that currently. Publish and unpublish are now called public and private. Both trash and the public private filter names are updated on the organized page. You can also now filter images you've spotlighted and show ones that are not in folders. Right-click menus have changed slightly for images and videos. Both now have the spotlight option. For videos specifically, the buttons in the upper right here are a little different. This is the download raw video button. The download for social button is now in the hamburger menu here, or you can right-click on the video and find it here. Over in the editor, we can finally specify the aspect ratio that we want and see what aspect ratio we are creating when we resize and reframe an image. Out of all of the recent website updates, this one is probably my favorite. They've also done some general website bug fixes and have started updating the change log again. You'll find it over on the updates page. They are looking into updating the chat section under community, perhaps to more of a forum style format, but changes here likely won't come until next year. There have also been several mobile improvements, including bug fixes and overall improvements to usability. They're also working on a mobile app I am primarily a website user. I just find the overall experience easier and more enjoyable. I'm curious though, if any of you are primarily mobile users, let me know down in the comments. A few other quick updates. A couple of months ago, I shared that Meta has a limited licensing agreement with Midjourney. And as of last month, Meta now lets you use a very limited version of Midjourney's V7 model for free through their Meta.ai platform. I stress the word limited because you can't even set custom aspect ratios and you don't have access to features like omni-reference, personalization, the editor, etc. Their documentation is also really poor and usage limits are not clear, but if you want to create some images for free, you can try it out. Midjourney has been teasing some secret projects all year and supposedly they have plans to start announcing them soon. Most of them are creativity focused, but one is non-creative with a humanitarian focus. We should also have a new personalization system coming soon. 
The idea is to eliminate the current process of ranking images and replace it with something new. The new system should be better at avoiding things like unwanted color hues, such as the teal hue that tends to show up in most of my personalized images. Before we go, I wanted to let you know that for a limited time, you can get access to all of my monthly prompt guides, posts, and other exclusive videos, all for the price of a cheap coffee. Join my Patreon community by December 3rd and you'll get 20% off your first month. All items in my shops are also discounted, including my SREF collection. My community members are almost always the first to get a demo of new features such as the style creator and tutorials on more obscure topics such as negative SREFs. Patreon is my primary source of income. I am incredibly thankful to everyone who has given and continues to give their hard earned money to support me so that I can continue creating content and resources for all of you. I have a lot planned for 2026, including a possible mid-journey course release early in the year. And to the 25% of you who have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for being here. I do these wrap-up videos every month, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, leave me a comment down below. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.